Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my next uh, tutorial on my newest patch. Uh, this patch is the Mask Drip and Bleed. Uh, this is perfect for Halloween. That was the premise behind this. I had some techniques, some things behind the scenes that I've been kind of uh, toying around with, but I really haven't really had a way to put them together. Um, I had these two different uh, effects that I was working on independently from each other. And then I had this idea that for Halloween, it could be interesting to do the both at the same time. Uh, so that's how this all kind of came to be. Uh, without further ado, here's some, you know, little bit of information about how this works. Um, it's basically using a uh, uh, delay in order to make it behind the scenes to make this kind of effect. Um, I have two options here. When you hit the check marks, it, it brings them about. Um, so you have obviously the drip and then you have the bleed. Um, you have the ability to change the directions of which way those drips and or bleeds happen. Um, you could have them both going at the same time or separate independent from each other. Um, so you could have just the drip and then you could have just the bleed. Um, there's also the change of the color in case you wanted to do something different. Uh, this is the outline color and there's also the outline thickness. The outline color and thickness will, uh, excuse me, the uh, thickness will do that. It will just change the thickness of the lines uh, that are happening between uh, the drip and the bleed. It's, it's creating that effect. Um, you can turn it off, however, just slide the slider all the way to the, the left and that will make it so that there will be no outline whatsoever. It's just a solid color. Uh, the solid color is based on this mask, hence the name Mask Drip and Bleed. Uh, I'm, I basically have like just a, an alpha channel mask, um, just pure white and black on a PNG um, of my logo. And then what I do is I can hit auto mask if I so choose to, to uh, mask the white from the black. And then as soon as I do that, when I hit the uh, drip and the bleed, it'll start to make those effects. So that's how that works. Um, there is a randomize button. It will change the um, the uh, pixelation where it's happening within the uh, the effect behind the scenes. This can help to kind of uh, shift around some of the bleeding and some of the the dripping. Uh, so you have that option, and it it will kind of uh, change that effect in case you want it to be kind of a different feel. Like there's something about it that you don't like that just kind of helps to randomize it. Also, if it doesn't seem to be like looking like um, it's it's moving, it's a good way to kind of troubleshoot to see if there's uh, if it's actually working or if it's something else. Um, let's go through some of these uh, things down here at the bottom. So I have separated it by groups. So you have your drip options and then you have your bleed options. Your drip options are uh, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you basically have the brightness and contrast. The brightness and contrast is the brightness and contrast of the mask that's happening on the logo, for instance. Uh, so if I if I make it not so contrast, you'll notice it just goes right back to what it was before. And if I hike up the contrast, the contrast will basically make it so that things that are black are see-through and things that are not uh, are this bluish color uh, will be uh, opaque. So for example, uh, I have this logo, for instance. You'll notice that the blue doesn't show up very, uh, very well. Uh, let's see if I can uh, change that just a little bit. It's because I have this shut, uh, uh, the multiply on this layer is, is down a little bit. But you'll notice that the purple that's coming behind this, this traffic slide here, behind the scenes, is actually bleeding through or dripping. Uh, the, the drip lines are, are being able to be seen through. So that's where that kind of comes in, is the ability to kind of uh, turn that uh, off and on. Okay, so uh, let's go back to this. Uh, so here we are, uh, we have the option for, you know, contrast like I was talking about and brightness. There's also the drip down. You can drip up or you can drip down, it's up to you. You can also drip left and right. Um, the reason for these options is because if you know how to play around with your, for instance, your timeline, for example, you could really get some strange effects with this, right? You could have it bounce back and forth, and then you could um, bring the values of one and negative one more closer to the center. And so then it'll bounce between the two uh, uh, very quickly. So let's see if I can do that. I'm going to bring this one to 0 0.1 and we'll bring this one to 0 
And so now we have this kind of going bouncing between the two. Uh, and this is basically dripping down and dripping up. It's very slow. So let's see if we can speed that up a little bit here. Uh, we're going to go this way, I believe. So now we have it bouncing between the two pretty quickly. Um, there's not enough big enough difference. So let's kind of expand that just a little bit. Uh, and you'll see it. It's, it's, so now it's giving this uh, the bounce back between the, uh, between the two. Uh, you will also have the option for left and right. So if I change this to zero uh, for left and right, you'll notice that now it's creating this up and down effect, this kind of shaky up and down drip. Uh, you may not want that. It may be you know, something more like that. Uh, we wanna slow it down a little bit, Oop, wrong way. And so now we have this kind of uh, drip and then pause, then drip, then pause. Um, so there's some nice features with this. It, it really kind of changes it up a bit. Um, okay, so I'm going to take off the timeline. I'm going to go back to basic. Uh, and we'll set this drip down to, uh, you know, like 0.13, which will kind of give it this slow feel. You'll notice the drip is kind of like squarish. Uh, that's how that can be controlled by the static. So if you pump up your static controls and then just hit the drip button again, um, drip density, drip size. So, okay, so here's your contrast of those, those little squares, right? But then if you change your drip size, that's the one that will change the square size. So if I hit drip, and you'll notice that now there's bigger drips, right? And if I change the drip size to, point, uh, to five, now when I make that, it really kind of feels more like rain, for instance. And so that is the, the, the premise behind it, right? It creates this kind of streakish effect. Um, then there's also the drip density. This is just kind of how they are clumped together. Um, that's the reason why I called it the density. It's, it's, it's clumping the areas uh, based on uh, illuminance, right? So um, there's these like striation patches that are happening in certain areas. And that's because there's a density uh, there's a uh, noise filter that I'm using creating a density. Um, same thing with this one. This one creates the static, right? Um, the contrast to the static. So it feels like um, there's more contrast there. Um, there's more black, 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 blacks and white, white, whites and gradations in between the closer you are to the to the zero value. And then as you get further down, now you get a real contrasted black and white lines that kind of feel like they're going through the thing. Um, so it's a little bit different from brightness and contrast, but it's a very similar pre uh, premise. The brightness and contrast is the overall values where this is more just straight the contrast values of the static itself. So it's just a different way of controlling it. Um, it, it to me, I, I think that m the more features you have available uh, to play around with, the more you know, the more abilities the the patch has. So that's the premise behind that. Okay, um, so that's basically the drip. Let's talk a little bit about the bleed. The bleed is a effect that is very interesting to me. I really like how it mixes well together with the the drip. Um, so you still have this drip coming through, but then it takes that information, that alpha channel that's created with this, the drip lines coming through, and it bleeds it out into all different directions. Uh, so there are different ways to control that. Uh, one of the things that you should know about this is that when you do the drip, it's creating that drip is now your mask for the bleed. So if you had patches of areas that are missing with the drip, then it would uh, you would see that. It would reflect that in the, in the bleed. So if I turn that off, this gives a different visual than, than this, obviously, right? So you get these cut edges at the very top, and it kind of bleeds out from the areas of that mask that it's created. Um, so right now it's set to... Uh, uh, bleed up, right? Um, so if I change this value, it's now dripping much faster. If I change this the other direction, it's going to drip up, right? Um, and the values in between. Now, because of the fact that drip is naturally going down, you'll notice that some of these still look like they're reaching down. Um, one of the things that I've, you know, uh, kind of fiddled with to try to get that to, to work a little better is give a, a, a larger value to drip up. Um, 
and that way you don't get as many drips up. But I, I like this effect, this kind of uh, organized chaos that it's created. Uh, and eventually what will happen is things will start to drip up when, as you get closer to the one value, right? Um, but then as you get closer to the zero value, it'll naturally want to drip down. Um, same kind of thing as before with the drip. Um, the bleed will also have the option for the timelines, of course. Um, so you could do like a timeline here and you could, you know, change these values just a little bit um, so that they kind of bounce back and forth. 3 to, let's say, uh, 0 0.35, 0 0.3, and 0.3. And then we'll do a bounce. And so now it gives it this kind of wavy kind of uh, bleed that goes through, right? And so I thought that was visually interesting. I think that that, that looks pretty cool, especially as it's red. Um, you get this kind of like if I add in the outline and then like add this in like well, let's let's change this to a darker red and then change this to a lighter red. I feel like that really gives it a nice impactful feel. It kind of ominous and kind of creepy for Halloween. So I thought that was pretty appropriate. Um, you have the bleed expansion. Bleed expansion is just basically that it expands how it expands out the the bleed. Uh, I'm going to turn this down just a little bit, so or I'm going to turn up the color so you can kind of see that. Um, if I turn off my drip, um, you'll notice that it's expanding out from, and, and actually I'll have to turn this off here, basic. Uh, if I turn that off and I expand, the bleed expansion will bleed out from its its the direction that it's naturally set to. So right now it's set to bleed up. Um, again, same kind of thing as before. Um, the more bleed up I do, the better it looks, right? Um, but you'll notice that um, the expansion just basically expands it out. It's the way in which it expands out from its um, initial point of origin, right? It's just a different way of um, expanding that out. Uh, I'm trying to figure out a different way to explain that so it's a a little bit more easier to understand. Just know that there may be times where you may want to expand it out quicker, and so that's the reason why I put that option in there is because then it it flows in a different it flows differently. Um, same thing with the grain. The grain is actually the static again, which is what's creating the bleed in the background. Um, this changes the size of the bleed, which therefore also changes the the speed of the bleed, right? Um, so it, you can notice here at the bottom, I don't know if you can see this in the video, but it will start to kind of flow out quicker. Um, same thing with this. This is the, f uh, the bleed speed, right? So if I turn it to zero, you, obviously nothing is moving right at this moment. But if I expand that up, you'll notice that now it's just dropping down like a flow of river. Um, so if I change some of these settings, for instance, if I change this grain, you'll notice that it kind of like does this weird kind of like pixelation. And as you notice, I don't know if you can see this here, but the squares, again, are much larger. And that's because of the fact that the grain has been changed to the size itself. Now they're much bigger versus much smaller. You'll see that there's like it looks like little bits of waterfall. And that's because they're static used in order to create that flow. Um, so... If we do the expansion again, you'll notice that it changes the way in which it's uh, expanding out. And this one kind of more contracts, right? And as I'm closer on this side, it expands out. So it's just a different way of, of controlling the bleed. Um, so you just kind of fiddle with this and try to figure out what works best for you. Um, I just want to kind of give a couple good examples of what I think this could work for. Uh, so here's a couple different examples. This is uh, just some diamonds that I had put together, and it gives it that very kind of flowish kind of feel. It just drops out of the diamonds, and I, I like that that look. I think that's very visually interesting. Um, same thing here. It's a Florida Lee, right? And so I just kind of added this kind of faster kind of effect, but bleeding out slower versus the drip it's almost on steroids it's bleeding right or it's you know dripping out so very quickly um i also have this option which was uh just um like an effect right and it kind of gives it this kind of ethereal kind of mist it kind of uh flows out of the shape uh, this was just a generic shape that i had created i thought it was visually uh stunning i think it's impactful um, it kind of reminds me of a robot. I don't know why. 
Um, but in any case, that's that's the premise there. Um, this is the uh, circle with a diamond or a circle with a triangle in it, and I really like how this one came out and gives it real kind of uh, goldish kind of blue, right? And I could change this more to a silverish color, and that could be really cool. I think that's that's just it adds a nice visual effect. Uh, same thing with this one. This one would just do the same thing. I just bleed this out, turn this off, right? And so you get this kind of drip and bleed effect. Now, um, what I could do in, in certain particular cases, right? This is just straight white, right? But I have this, this white. I could turn this white to black and now I get this kind of, well, you get to see it. It's, it's very interesting. I, I really like that. So in any case, uh, the final thing is this is the drip and bleed, and so you can't have Halloween without some skull or some kind of spooky thing. Uh, it's kind of cartoonish, I know, I apologize. Um, but this is kind of the premise behind it, drip and bleed. Uh, thank you very much for your interest in, and if you've made it through this video this long, I really do appreciate everything. Um, I appreciate all the um, encouragement from all the different artists out there. Uh, without you, your guys' interest in my patches, um, I would not be able to do what I do. And I appreciate that immensely. Um, if you have any questions, comments, complaints, concerns, please email me. My email address is jacobmesick, M-E-S-I-C-K, at gmail.com. jacobmesick at gmail.com. Thank you very much again for your uh, interest in my patch, and you be sure to have a great day.